God said, God is all of that in son. He suffered, died, buried that rose on the third day Saturday. Three days and three nights. All right then. Holy Jalo, Holy Jalo. Blessed Shabbat, brothers and sisters, Hebrews in Jamaica, the Caribbeans, the West, to the four corners of the earth scattered greetings. This Shabbat lesson, I'm going to tackle this, there were giants before and after the flood. There were giants before and after the flood. Now I'm going to outline in scriptures about giants because the Bible speak about giants throughout the scriptures right there are 32 Bible verses about giants in the scriptures 32 right after we go through the scriptures I'm going to show you text Asian text and archaeological archeolo archaeological pictures and references that backs up what the scripture says right the book of Enoch speak about these giants the book of Enoch calling watchers right they are giants and the, the, the Hebrew word for giants are Nephilim or Nephal meaning giants or tall ones however you want to coin it right So, a lot of people go, will tell you that these things are not real or his favorite tale or whatever the case may be to justify their ignorance and to continue on in their ignorance because they do not want to come to the Mosai and his words. They don't want to come to Yahushua so Yahushua can reconcile them back to his father Yahuwah. They don't want, they don't want to, 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 to embrace that this word, this holy word, this truth is in fact reality and everything that, that's, that, that, that's written in the scriptures took place right here on earth and nowhere else. All right. Genesis 6, 4, right. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of Elohim came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old men renowned. Right? Right? These were the mighty men of renown. Now, the sons of Elohim are angels. Right? The sons of Elohim are angels. Right? So they were in their natural abode, which is in heaven. Right? They hastened to Hassan, to Hashatan. Right? And they begin to lust after, after the women on earth. And they came down. And they took the form of flesh, right? And then intermingle with women and bring forth children. Those children became evil spirits. They became giants, men of renown. That's what the scripture means by men of renown. Men who, you know what I mean, change history through their acts, right? Numbers 13, 33. 
There also we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, are part of the Nephilim, and who became like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. That's going to show you how big and tall these guys are. They're like, you know what I mean? When they look at humans, they're like ants or grasshopper, very small, because of their stature. Deuteronomy 2.11 Like the Anakim, they were also regarded as Rafim. But the Moabites call them Imam. So Rafim is like the, 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 the tribe, right? Because you have different tribes of giants, right? So you see, like the Anakim, they were also regarded as Rafim. But the Moabites call them Imam. Right? Deuteronomy 2.20 It is also regarded as the land of Raphim. For Raphim formerly lived in it, but the Ammonites called them Zam Zomin. Right? Deuteronomy 3.11 For only Og, king of Bashan, was left of the remnant of the Raphim. See, Raphim is a not a tribe of giants and 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 Og the king of Bashan is from that 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 tribe and King David mentioned him right King King David King David mentioned him in Psalms 135 11 136 20 right he also is mentioned in Amos 2 9 Numbers 21 33 Numbers 32 35 right it also mentions Sihan, another giant, right? Okay, so for all, so Deuteronomy 3 11, for only Og, king of Bashan, was left of the remnant of the Raphim. Behold, his bedstead was an iron bedstead. It is in Rabbah of the sons of Ammon. Its length was nine cubits and its width. Four cubits by ordinary cubits. Right? Or, right? Joshua 17, 15. Joshua said to them, If you are a numerous people, go up to the forest and clear a place for yourself there in the land of Perizites. Perizites. Right? Of the... Raphim, since the hill country of Ephraim is too narrow for you. So Joshua said to them, If you are numerous people, go up the forest and clear a place for yourself. There in the land of Perizes, or the Perizzites, of the Raphim, right? So that's a race of giants right there. Since the hill country of Ephraim is too narrow for you. Right, Joshua eighteen sixteen. The border went down to the edge of the hill, which is in the valley of Bin Hinnom, Bin Hinnom, which is in the valley of Rapham. You say that again, Rapham, the race of giants. That's their tribe, northward, and it went down to the valley of Hinnom, to the slope of the Jebusite, southward. And went down to Enrogel. Right? So these are the accounts Joshua is telling us in scriptures of these race of giants called Raphim. Right? You see right here at, 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 you see right here in, 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 in Deuteronomy 3 1. It says, For only Og king of Bashan was left of the remnant of the what? The Raphim. And we know King. Og is a giant, right? I come down in, in Joshua right here. He said, Joshua said to them, If you are a numerous people, go up to the forest and clear a place for yourself, right? Because the place that they, they, they was is too narrow, right? It couldn't hold them, so they need a forest. So they have to cut down the forest to build their own city, right? Joshua 18, 16. The border went down to the edge of the hill, which is in the valley of Ben-Hinnom. 
which is in the valley of Rafam or Rafim, northward, but it went down to the valley of Hinnom, to the slope of Jebusite, northward, and went down to Enrogel. Right? Enrogel. 1 Samuel 17, 4. Then a champion came out from the armies of the Philistine named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Right? We know the, we know uh, the famous Gol Goliath. He had, he had, I think, two to three more brothers. Right? So, Goliath was not the only giant. He had brothers too that were giants. Right? Second Samuel 21, 16. Then, Ish -ba bin -ab, Ish bin -ab, right? Ish bin -ab, who was among the descendants of the giant. You see that again? Then, Ish bin -ab, who was among the descendants of the giant, the weight of whose spear was 300 shekels of bronze in weight was girded with new sword and he tended to kill David. Right? 2 Samuel 21, 20 There was war at Gath again where there was a man of grey stature who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, 24 in number and he also had been born to the giant. See, right? So they were born from the fallen angel. Called the fallen angel mated with children. Because they were the sons of Eliakim. They left their natural abode. They came down to heaven. I mean they came down to earth. See the daughters of see the daughters of the earth and mingle with them and bring forth seed. And those seed became giants, men of renown. They become evil. They become evil spirits. Demonic. Right? Their evil in nature. Right? Numbers 13, 28. Nevertheless, the people who lived in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified, and very large, and moreover, we saw the descendant of Anak there. So you see? You see what it says? Nevertheless, the people who live in the land are strong and the cities are fortified and very large. That means the monuments that they build is extraordinary. That no normal human beings can rebuild or recreate. Right? You see that? The same thing with the, 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 the pyramids. And all these humongous monuments. No human can replicate that today. Because it takes you superhuman strength to do and lift these things. Like I said, as 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 you go, as I go through this lesson, right? You will see what I'm talking about with archaeological evidence, right? And images to show you these things. That back of what the scripture has been saying for thousands of years. The scriptures is true, brothers and sisters. The scripture is real. This is no fairy tale. You know, come out of the European lens, brothers and sisters. Hebrew, the descendants of Hebrew slaves. You understand? Come out of that mindset and study the scripture like you study. Master history book for four years in your college and dumb down your mindset and burn out your common sense and critical thinking. Come back to your roots, your Hebrew roots. Study the scriptures. You understand? In his original language, his Hebrew language and the Greek. You got to study it. Find yourself in it, brothers and sisters. Hebrews, children of Yisrael, descendants of Hebrew slaves scattered. You got to come back to it. You gotta research it. You gotta study it like you study your books in your school, which tell you lies. Right? Right? Deuteronomy 128. Where can we go up? 
our brethren have made our hearts melt, saying, The people are bigger and taller than we, the cities are large and fortified to heaven. And besides, we saw the sons of the Anakim there. Right? Deuteronomy 2.10 The Emem lived there, formerly a people as great, numerous, and tall as Anakim. Right? Deuteronomy 9.2 A people great and tall, the sons of Anakim, whom you know and of whom you have heard, it said, who can stand before the sons of Anak? Right? Joshua 11.21 Then Joshua came at that time and cut off the Anakim from the hill country, from Hebron, from Deber, from Anab, from all the hill country of Judah, and from all the hill country of Yashrael. Joshua utterly destroyed them with their cities. So you see? Joshua went up against these giants and destroyed them. You understand? Because the Moses of Yahuwah Tisavahot was with Joshua. You understand? Joshua 14, 50. And Joshua was a normal man. Normal, regular sized man. But, but Yahuwah Tisavahot, his hosts was with Joshua and Yashuael. Right? Joshua 14, 15. Now the name of Hebron was formerly Kiriath Arba. Kiriath Arba. Of Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim. Then the land had rest from war. Right? Joshua 15, 14. Caleb drove out from there the three sons of Anak. Shishai and Ahiman. And Talmahai, the children of Anak. Right? So all these are giants that Caleb drove out. Right? Joshua 13, 12. All the kingdom of Og in Bashan who reigned in Astaroth and in Edri, he alone was left of the remnant of the Raphim. For Moshe struck them and disposed them. So you see, even Moses went up against the giants and struck them down. Right? Genesis 14, 5. In the fourteenth year, Shed, Shed Rolahomer, right? Shed, Shed Dor Lahomer, and the kings that were with him came and defeated the Raphim in Astaroth, Karnahim, and the Zuzim in Ham and the Imam in Shiva Karathiahim. Right? So Ham is Africa, the land of Ham in Africa. Right? Numbers 13 32. So they gave out to the sons of Yashrael a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone in spying it out is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in, in it are men of great size. So you talk about the giants again, great size. You understand? 10, 12, 13 foot, 14 foot, some tall as 33 foot giants, even taller. Right? Joshua 14, 12. Now, the, now then, give me these hill country about which, the, which Yahuwah spoke on that day. For you heard on that day that Anakim were there with great fortified city. Perhaps Yahuwah will be with me and I will drive them out as Yahuwah has spoken. Amos 2, 9. Yet it was I who destroyed the Amorite before them, though his height was like the height of cedars. So you see that you picture see a cedar tree in Lebanon. Right? You picture that, brothers and sisters. Right? You saw how tall a cedar tree is. 15, 20, 30 foot tall. Right? Some taller. Hmm? That's how tall those giants were. 
right? Amos 2 9. Yet it was I who destroyed the Amorites before them, though his height was like the height of cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. You know, oak tree is strong, right? And I, I, I even destroyed his fruit above and his root below. 1 Chronicles 28. These are descendants from the giants in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. You see that? Deuteronomy 2, 10, 11. The Emmon lived there formerly, a people as great, numerous, and tall as Anakim. Like the Anakim, they are also regarded as Raphim, but the Moabites call them Emmon. Right? Numbers 13, 22. When they had gone up into the Negev, they came to Hebron, where Aheman, Shishahi, and Talmahi, the descendants of Anak, were no were now with the descendants of Anak were now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Right, so you see that? I'll read it again for you. When they had gone up into Negev, they came to Hebron where Ahaman, Shishahi, and Talmahi, the descendants of Anak, were. Right? Now Hebron was built seven years before Zohan in Egypt. So let that sink in. So it was the giants who helped build Egypt, the pyramids and so forth, like that. I'm going to show you an image later on to, 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 to show that fact. Right? Joshua 15, 13, 14. Now he gave to Caleb, the son of Yephoni, right, Yephoni, a portion among the sons of Yehuda or Judah, according to the command of Yahuwah to Joshua. Namely, Kiriath Arba, Arba being the father of Anak, that is Hebron. Caleb drove out from there the three sons of Anak, Shishahi and Ahaman and Talmahi, the children of Anak. Judges 1.20 Then they gave Hebron to Caleb as Moses had promised, and he drove out from there the three sons of Anak. Right, First Chronicles 25. And there was war with the Philistines again. And Eliahan, Eliahan, or Elianan, the son of Yar, or Jar, killed Lami, the brother of Goliath. Did you die? So I tell us, I remember I told you earlier in, in, in the lesson that Goliath had brothers. Right? So, let me read the verse again. First Chronicles 25 And there was war with the Philistines again And Elianan, the son of Yar Killed Lami, the brother of Goliath So Goliath's brother is Lami Right? The Gittite The shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam So imagine how a weaver's beam is big and heavy Right? 2 Samuel 21, 18. Now it came about after this that Right? Now it came about after this that there was war again in the Philistine. Right? So we had 2 Samuel 21, 18. Now it came about after this that there was war there was war again with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibekahi, the Hushethite, struck down Saf, who was among descendants of the giants. Right? Chronicles 24. Now it came about after this that war broke out at Gezer with the Philistine. Then Sibekahi, the Hushethite, killed Sipa, one of the descendants of the giants, and they were subdued. Right? 
First Chronicles 26. So you see, all these things the Israel went up, went up against these giants to get rid of them because these giants were evil. The earth could not sustain them because they, they were so huge in number that food, the food that they eat keep running out so that they turn, they start turning against humans and animals and start eating them. You know, the most of them are, are, are most of them, all of these giants are cannibals. You know, you know what I mean? And they experiment on people. Genetic experimentation. You know what I mean? Cross, cross, cross man and beast together. That's why you see those mythical creatures, half man, half beast. Is experiment from the fallen angels, the giants, evil spirits. They was contaminating the Mosai creation. That's why the Mosai sent the flood the first time. And some of them escape. And they come into the 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 the, 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 the after the flood. That's why the, the, the scripture said they were giants before and after the flood. You understand? And they were still coming down from heaven and, and, and lying on Mount, on Mount Herb. Right? You can go research that for yourself. Or Mount Herman. You know? First Chronicles 26. Right? Again, there was war at Gath. Where there was, there was a man of great stature who had twenty-four fingers and toes, six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, and he also was descended from giants. First Chronicle eleven twenty-three, right? He killed an Egyptian, a man of great stature, five cubits tall. Now in the Egyptian hand was a spear like a weaver's beam. But he went down to him with a club and snatched his spear from the Egyptian hand and killed him with his own spear. Right? That's the power of the Mosai. When the Mosai power is with you, when Yahuwah Tisavahot is with you, right? When Yahushua is your guide, brothers and sisters, you can't slew even man, man five, six your man five, six times your size. You understand? The scriptures are showing you these things. Right? Right? The last of the giants by David and his warriors, right? The valley of David obtained victories over the Philistine in in giant in Og, the king of Bashan was subdued by Shed, shed, shed door Lamar. Right, shed door Lamar. Right, dwell in Canaan, the valley of exceedingly fruitful, the valley of border of Judah. Right, Joshua fifteen fourteen. Caleb drove out from the three sons of Anak, Sisha and Haman, and tell the children of Anak. Right. Joshua eleven twenty one. Then Joshua came at that time and cut off the Anakim from the hill country, from Hebron, from Debir, from Anab, and from all the hill country of Judah, and from all the hill country of Yashrael. Joshua utterly destroyed them with their cities. Right? Right, brothers and sisters. So these are the scriptures that speak about the giants. Right? Right, brothers and sisters. Alright. Some Asian texts say that Goliath stood at four cubits and a span, which Chadwick says equals about 7.80 feet, which is 2.38 meters, right? While other Asian texts claim that he towered at six cubits and a span, a measurement equivalent to about 11 feet, 11.35 feet or 3.46 meters. So brother and sister, you see how tall these people are? Right? 
imagine seeing someone like that well we actually have modern day people like that amongst us like these basketball players shacking them seven foot yeah you know I mean over seven foot these are giants modern day giants brothers and sisters you understand these are modern day giants all right let's go to the book of enoch chapter seven we're going to read one to six right and all the others together with them took unto themselves wives. So Enoch is telling you what happened in the beginning, coincided with Genesis of the fallen angels, right? And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go in unto them and defile themselves with them. And they took and they taught them charms. And enchantments, right? So charm and enchantments are what? Are what, brothers and sisters? You guess. Charms and enchantments are magic, black magic, sorcery, witchcraft, all evil things. You deal with evil spirits and even spiritual realms right now. These are the angels who taught mankind these things. That is why you have all these type of things on this earth today. Due to the fallen angels. Right? So don't make no mistake, you have the, the, the ones that is bound for eternal judgment with Hashatan, right? You have those angels, different fallen angels, they were bound. But then after the flood, angel was still coming along and having children by, by these females. You understand? Let's go over this again, Enoch chapter 7. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives and each chose himself one and they began to go in unto them and to devile and to and to defile themselves with them and they taught them charms and enchantments and cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants right and they became pregnant and they bear great giants whose height was three thousand ells who consume all the acquisitions of men and when men could no longer sustain them the giants turn against them like i'll tell you earlier right the giants turn against them and devour mankind so they began to feast on mankind like i said earlier most of these giants all of them are cannibals you understand they're cannibals people you know they eat they eat humans and turn and and turn on themselves and eat themselves too and they began to sin against bird and beast and reptiles and fishes, right? So what what why why think the scriptures say Enoch say this they, they began to sin against birds and beasts? Because number one, they they, they started experiment on animals and beasts, genetic experiment as you see, as you see what's going on today. Genetic experiment. You understand messing with the with the most high creation. You know what I mean? Tweaking and manipulating the humans. You got humanoids. You got half man, half beast, as you see in mythical and Greek mythology. You understand? You know, those so called aliens you see are code names. It's really fallen angels, but they code name aliens or un unidentified objects. These things are real. They are in government labs and undergrounds right recently they're beginning to reveal the truth about what they have and what they know right for centuries for hundreds of years these 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 wicked governments and government official and government system be in communication with fallen angels aka aliens you understand and they began to sin at verse 5 and they began to sin against birds and beasts right and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood you see they devour one another flesh and drink the blood then the earth laid accusation against the lawless one right so three so therefore three thousand ls would be 4,500 feet in height or 1,350 
in meters, 1,250 meters. Obviously, nothing like a search engine to provide answers to questions. Right? Right, brothers and sisters? So you have a biblical account of giants, right? Let's go to some archaeological archaeological facts of these things, right? The Bible is famous for its account of Levantine giants. Goliath was six cubits and a span or over nine feet tall according to 1 Samuel 17 4. The giant Og's 13 foot long bed actually became a museum piece in the biblical account Deuteronomy 3.11 An Egyptian mercenary, seven and a half feet tall, right? Chronicles 11.23, right? You're going look, look, to look at the screen, you're going to see, you're going to see Egyptian, right? Right, Egyptian mercy seven and a half feet tall, chronicles, tall tribe, Anakim, Nephilim, Raphim, which terrified the Israelite spies caught in the promised land. The spies over Jama the spies, the spies, right? Over dramatized them as making Israel look like grasshopper in comparison to persuade the Israelite to turn back to Egypt to Egypt. Right, Numbers thirteen thirty three. Right, but 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 but, but was they over dramatizing? No. Right, because as you look at your screen, you will see an image of an Egyptian giant who is building the pyramid, and and you see in the image, as you can see on the screen in the image. Right. The giant or giants bringing or carrying a stone that weighs over six ton. You know what ton is, brothers and sisters? A ton is so heavy that not even modern day machine today can move it. That's how strong and powerful these giants are, right? And when you compare to the image on your right, a normal human being, right, at average size, average weight, he's like a grasshopper. Just like what the scripture says. Right? Alright? Giants in Canaan are easily passed up as fanciful biblical myth. But did you know that there is contemporary material that Detailing the existence and even height of giants of the Levant, right? Because the land of Canaan is now formerly Israel. This is the land that that had the giants, the land of giants, where when 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 Joshua went to go spy on the land, you understand? They see that they were giants, and in their side as grasshoppers, right? And that was no exaggeration. You see what I mean? There was no exaggeration, brothers. Right? If you look on your screen, also right here, right, you have Papyrus Ananasati. Papyrus Anasati is an Egyptian literary text. If you look on the screen, you will see it right now. Right? It's from the 19th dynasty around the 13th century BCE. It is scribble. Is a scribal training or scribal training scribal training sheet that includes numerous important historical details about the early Levant, including the names of towns throughout Canaan and Syria. Right? Papyrus Anastasi. Right? That's the image you see right now on your screen. Right, is an Egyptian literary text from the 19th dynasty around the 13th century BCE. It is scribal, 
training sheet that includes numerous important historical details about the Earl of Anne, including the names of towns throughout Canaan and Syria. The text mentioned the Levantine tribe called Shasu and its warriors. The valley region is infested with Shasu. Right? Some of them are of four cubits or of five cubits from the head to foot. Fierce of face, their heart is not mild and they hearken not to coaxing. Right? That, that may not mean anything to modern reader, but to Egyptians familiar with their royal cubit length, that was a truly impressive size. In modern terminology, four to five Egyptian cube is from just under seven to eight feet inches tall. Right? Here's a image of Egyptian beat Sashu spies. Right? If you look on the screen, you can see that right now. Egyptian beat Sashu spies. There is also a depiction of Shasu captive on an Egyptian war relief depicting the Battle of Kadesh circa 1274 BCE. It shows two captured Shasu spies being beaten by the horde of Egyptians. Often in such an Asian artwork, national dominance was shown by the size of the individual depicted. Note the classic example of massive or massive pharaoh defeating their enemies, but the Kadish image depicted in very realistic style, large Shashu males compared to their victorious Egyptian counterpart, thus together with Papyrus Anastasi, highlighting members of Shasu society as reaching very tall height. Right? Still little is known about the Sashu people. The earliest known reference dates, of, dates to a Levantine people list from the 15th century BCE. We know from 13th century BCE, Pharaoh Merenafatat or Pharaoh Merenafatat's inscription that they were on the scene at the time as the early Israelite Egyptian artwork depicts them dressed in clearly Canaanite manner. The Kaddish inscription relate that they serve in a limited missionary sense along the Hittites. So again, you see all these historical texts and artifacts showing you that what the scripture is saying is true. And it's back to what the scripture said about giants. Right? The 13th century BCE Egyptian text relates six different tribes of Shasu. Perhaps all or only certain of them were predisposed to reach all tall statues. Whatever the case, they lived specifically in the southern Levant in the region of the Philistines. Right? And those are the Philistines that King David and, Yah and Yashrael went up against. Joshua and them went up against the fight. Canaan and the Transjordan thus fitting the biblical. See that again? Thus fitting the biblical, see it again, let me read it again. Thus fitting the biblical location of giant peoples, they also disappear from the archaeological record during the early Iron Age. Late biblical judges, early king's period, the same time in which the biblical reference to them end. So all the naysayers of scriptures, who tried to fight against the Mosai words, claiming the Mosai words, his favorite tale is not real, or is a sky god, or this and all that. Now how you feel? How foolish you feel now, seeing that your own scholars who you put your trust in, man who put your trust in, verify the accounts of scriptures, verify the events of scriptures that take place on earth here. Hmm? My Elohim is real. Yahushua HaMashiach is real. He came on this earth. He walked on this earth. He suffered on this earth. He died on this, this earth. He rose out of the tomb from this earth and reconciled to his father Yahuwah. Right? He came for Yashrael. He died for Yashrael. 
and he gonna gather Yashrael back to his former state and his glory. You understand? I can look on this. I can look on the screen right now. There's, there are pictures of giants. Right. A picture of giants. Right. You have one. You have one image right here. Right. You have two guys standing and in the middle you have the giant. Giant remain. Right. Here. Here's. Here's one for your. For bidders. Archaeological file. Right. Scientists are remaining stubbornly signed about a lost race of giant Nephilim found in burial mounds near the Dalvan or Dalavan, Wisconsin in May 1912. The dig site, right, at Lake Dalavan was overseen by Billiard College and it includes more than 200 effigy mounds that that prove to be classic example of 8th century woodland culture. So that's the image you're seeing right now, right? With the two archaeologists and the, the, the giant remain in the middle, right? Right? One of... One of... One of for your forbidders, archaeological... Arch, archaeological file right scientists are remain stubbornly silent about a lost race of of giants nephilim found in burial mounds near the delavan wisconsin in may 1912 so this was discovered in may 1912 right right I could look there's there's others there's another giant with six fingers right so all these images I'm showing you coincide with scriptures coincide with the archaeological text that I just showed you and wrote right right brothers and sisters there's another one right here Right, is an Egyptian giant. Right, and he's carrying a huge stone. Right, I could see the image right next to it. He's bringing it to build the pyramid, and those stones weigh over six tons and more. Right, so that proved that the Israelite did not build the pyramids, brothers and sisters. They may have repaired it, and even that is a stretch, but they did not build the pyramid. The pyramids, right? I just want you to know. And there's other image. Look at this one right here, and this one right there. Right? We got this image right here of Gilgamesh. Right? This image of Gilgamesh, image, repeti image representation of Gilgamesh, a mass, a mass of animals. He grasping a lion in his left arm, right? And a snake in his right arm, in his right hand, right? In an Assyrian palace relief, 1713 to 706 BC. From Der Sharp, right? Der Sharp Pekin, right? Now held in the Loverny or Lovery. His rule was in early dynastic period, Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, right? Mesopotamia, henceforth, 
2900 2350 BC right so Mesopotamia is a historical region right of western asia situated within within the within the tigris euphrates river system in right so the mesopotamia is a historical region of western asia situated within the tigris euphrates river system in the northern part of the, the fertile crescent mesopotamia right it occupies modern Iraq. It occupies modern Iraq, right? The, 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 so it, it occupies modern Iraq, right? The region includes also the head of Persian Gulf and Southeast Turkey, right? West Iran, Northern Eastern Syria, and Northern Kuwait right so all these things for the people brothers and sisters you have to realize there's no such thing as middle east right the middle east is a word used to throw you off to get you confused right they throw you off to get you confused you understand they throw you off to get you confused brothers and sisters because these people know the truth of what's going on but they're hiding it from you because they know many of you are ignorant and many of you will not read the scriptures for yourself because you believe the lies that they told you about the scriptures you understand oh the white man this the white man didn't do nothing he didn't write the scriptures he he the most didn't inspire him to do nothing you understand no you have all these evidence before you both biblical which is the only evidence you needed, but because many of you are stubborn and hard headed, I have to come with these archaeological texts and images and research to prove to you that what the scripture says is true. What does say Yahuwah is true, brothers and sisters. It is true, right? The book of Enos talk about these things. Right? Considering the angel, considering the watch, considering the watcher's angel. Right? Because the book of Enoch call him watchers. Right? Considering the watcher angels were bound by God. Because you have to understand people. You ever, you ever, you ever, you ever wonder how all of a sudden, between the last 100 and 200 plus years, Technology does boom increase like that. Knowledge increase like that. Right? Before they was riding horse and buggies. You no? Know? On people. You ever thought about that? Right? Considering the watcher angels were bound by Elohim came around 3000 BC and are due to release after seventh generation per the book of Enoch. Right? So that would mean that 70 generation times 70 years per one generation will put us in the 1900s or 20th century in this time this is the this is the exact time that we begin began witnessing an explosion of knowledge weaponry world wars technology and immortality furthermore the book of daniel tells us that that the knowledge will increase in the latter days daniel 12:4 right this be due to the fact that the watchers angels or fallen angels aka aliens are sharing the information with the masses especially considering the 5000 year gap between the last release 3000 bc so you see brothers and sisters that explains a lot you understand so a lot of things been hide, is been hidden from you. But many of you will not go and seek it out to find the truth. You just dismiss the scriptures as if it's, it's some type of, like I said, fairy tale. 
or whatever imagination you, 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 you dream up in your head. But your own ignorance is going to lead you astray, brothers and sisters. Destruction is coming to the wicked and all those that oppress the Most High and, 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 and His people. You understand? Judgment is coming to the, to the, to the wicked. And destruction is coming to Yashorel too. Those who cling on to Massa and will not let go. Stockholm Syndrome is, is, is hey, hey, man, hey, hey, listen. That thing called Stockholm Syndrome, you better get rid of that, brothers and sisters. And when the judgment come to them, it's going to come to you also. That will devour and destroy you. Because you continue to deny the most and his sovereign power and his mercy and grace towards you, O Yashrael. Alright, Mika 515 KJV. And I will execute vengeance in the anger and fury upon the heathen such as they have not heard. Enoch chapter 62, 1 to 15. In those days, the kings who possess the earth shall be punished by the angels of his wrath, wheresoever they shall be delivered up that he may give rest for a short period. And that they may fall down and worship before Yahuwah our spirits, confessing their sins before him. They shall bless and glorify Yahuwah our spirit, saying, Blessed is Yahuwah of spirits, Yahuwah of kings, Yahuwah of princes, Yahuwah of the rich, Yahuwah of glory, and Yahuwah of wisdom. He shall enlighten every secret thing. Thy power is from generation to generation. And, and thy glory forever and ever. Deep are all thy secrets and numberless. And, and thy righteousness cannot be com, com, computed. Now we know that we should glorify and bless Yahuwah of kings. Him who is king over all things. They shall also say who has granted us rest. And to glorify, loud, bless and confess in the presence of his glory. And now... Small is the rest who desire, but we do not find it. We reject and do not possess it. Light has passed away from before us, and darkness has covered our thrones forever. For we have not confessed before him. We have not glorified the name of Yahuwah of kings. We have not glorified Yahuwah in all his words, but we have trusted in the scepter of our dominion, and of our glory. So you see that? This is what man does. They do not glorify the most. But they trust in their scepter. Or dominion of their own glory. Right? In that day. Verse 10. In that day of our suffering. And our trouble. He will not save us. You see that? Because why is he not going to save you? Because you put your trust in your scepter. Or your dominion. And our glory, your glory, that's what you put your trust in. So in the day of your suffering, right, in the day of our suffering and our trouble, he will not save us, neither shall we find rest. We confess that our Yahuwah is, we confess that our Yahuwah is faithful in all his work, in all his judgment and in his righteousness in this judgment he paid no respect to persons and we must depart from his presence on account of our evil deeds all our sins are truly without number then shall they say to themselves our souls are satiated with the instrument of crime but that prevents us not from descending to the flaming wombs of hell Right, but that prevent us not from descending to the flaming womb of hell. Afterwards, their countenance shall be filled with darkness and confusion before the Son of Man, from whose presence they shall be expelled, and before whom this word and before whom the sword shall remain to expel them. Thus said Yahuwah of spirits. This is decree and a judgment against the princes, the kings, 
and exalting on those who possess the earth in the presence of Yahuwah of Spirit. So you see, when it talks about the princes, the kings, and the exalted who possess the earth, He's talking about the government heads. He's talking about the system. He's talking about the judges. Right? He's talking about the, 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 the all who in charge of the world, of the earth and its system. Because the scripture says, right? The scripture said, he give the earth over to the hand of the wicked to be ruled for a certain period of time. Right? Second Ezra 15, 22, 16, 11, King James Version. My right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not seize over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. Sirach or Ecclesiastes 25, 7, 16, 11. There are nine who come to mind as blessed, and ten who my tongue proclaims. The man who finds joy in his children and the one who lives to see the downfall of his enemies. Brothers and sisters, you understand? I hope you understand and understood this lesson about the giants and I hope it put to rest the doubt you have in scriptures because I've showed you two sides. Right? I showed you the biblical outline of scriptures of how the scriptures uh, uh, speak about the giants. Right? It talks about the tribe of giants and who they went up against. Right? And it also speak about and I also showed you archaeological evidence and text to show you and to prove that what the scripture says is true because it's all in the same balance. You have the physical evidence, right? And you have the, you have the physical and archaeological evidence and you have the spiritual evidence with the scriptures. And Yahuwah, Tisavahot, cannot lie. You understand? And his words would not come back to him void. All his words will be fulfilled. Praise Yahuwah. Yashrael, prepare to meet your Elohim. Gentiles, prepare for war. You understand? Bless the Shabbat. I'm going to leave a link at the bottom of this video. Of a giant that was caught on tape in Japan. It's, on, it's a sight to behold. Please do watch the link, my people. So, them get up every day with them bag of champagne. This world of hell in their side. Destruction is the ultimate price. People open up your eyes. Only Jalo, only Jalo. created you and I.